All rise for the national anthem of Mauritius. be seated. Honorable Minister for Information and Communication Technology, Mr. Tassa Rajan Pele Chedambram, Mr. Jakob Konstan, Chairman of the Executive Committee of the International Conference, Mrs. Dudesha Madab, Data Protection Commissioner, Mauritius, distinguished sponsors, distinguished speakers and participants, all protocols observed. I welcome on stage Mrs. Dudesha Madab. Honorable Minister for Information and Communication Technology, Mr. Tasarajan Pele Chidambram, Mr. Jakob Konstan, Chairman of the Executive Committee, Honorable Guests, Distinguished Sponsors, distinguished speakers and participants, all protocols observed. A warm welcome to you all to the 36th International Conference of Data Protection and Privacy Commissioners organized by my office. A world order for data protection, our dream coming true, is the title of our conference. Why the term world order and how is this dream going to be materialized. I believe there's only one right to privacy, only one right for data protection, which, which should sorry, speak only one language, the universal language. That is, one world, one privacy. The modalities for enforcing this unique right vary from one jurisdiction to the other, without any doubt, but should not compromise the essence and soul of the right to privacy. Humanity may well be captured in the web of digitalization, but the human mind was born free and will remain free. Technology with all its good intentions and deeds cannot control the reason for our existence, although it is monitoring and assisting all our daily single moves. Mauritius intends through this conference to propose to both the developing and developed worlds to consider making data protection a one and only right with no fundamental differences in the way it is enforced in both worlds in order for this right to be protected not as an endemic species in danger of extinction but as a right alive with full vigor and substance. Mauritius believes in progress at the right place and at the right time. We do not want to miss the cruise ship bringing us to new shores in the quest for the exploration of an ever multi-dimensional right which is privacy. Our commitment to an effective right to privacy is and should be our goal and ambition. Mauritius has not only proven itself as a country capable of great heights, but also of great minds. This is why I believe that we can never be a nation of followers, but of pioneers. History has witnessed 
our once empty island being transformed into one of the most recommended destinations in Africa for doing business by our multiracial community, let alone our world rankings as being one of the leaders in Africa. The themes developed for this conference will prove that a world tornado is swelling up and gaining the right momentum to wash away outdated practices and instill fresh thinking into the data protection ecosystem. Right from Europe to America, Asia Pacific to Africa, we are all being driven towards our common destination. The start of the realization of a global set of principles for data protection rights. The United Nations has, after a long time, decided to take the lead, inspired by and together with the EU data protection reform, the modernizing of Convention 108, the aftermaths of the NSA scandals, the European Court of Human Rights, the European Court of Justice, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, domestic case laws, the resolutions of our past conferences and many others. We are standing at the crossroads of a major overhaul of entrenched beliefs and practices in the quest for modernity and progress. The recommended protocol to Article 17 of the UN International Covenant on civil and political rights to create an enforceable global privacy standard, if realized, will be a major step in the right direction. Let us conclude a pact today, the pact of making our dream come true through a strong message to world leaders that we, the data protection and privacy community, pledge that we will join hands together in bringing data protection to the hype and respect it deserves among the panoply of fundamental human rights in our national constitutions. Privacy is supreme and data protection should be given the same status of a constitutional right where it is not so provided. Since there is no other way of defeating the rocket speed pace in which technology develops and the lethargic pace at which law develops. The move from tra traditional privacy to privacy of location, privacy of thoughts and feelings, privacy of behavior, privacy of association is indeed confirming that privacy is multi-dimensional. I also believe that the right balance is to be struck between a purely academic and a practical analysis of this right during our debates. Because we regulators believe in enforcement and outcomes and solutions to assess our far too many investigations awaiting us. This forum is the place to bring and share practical and meaningful ideas. The idea of having a reporter's panel on day two is precisely to sum up all practical ideas and solutions in a package to be readily shipped home with instant application and guaranteed efficiency. Last but not least, Winston Churchill once said, you will never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. The organization of this conference has been a long, enjoyable journey with all its challenges. Many were fruitful, some were purposefully malicious, but I believe I have reached my destination. With these words, I thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you, Mrs. Madab. I'd like to now call upon the Honorable Minister for his opening speech.
Mr. Jacob Constan, Chairman of the Executive Committee, Mrs. Madab, the Data Protection Commissioner, distinguished sponsors, speakers, participants, and guests, a warm welcome to you all in Mauritius. I must say that it's my pleasure and privilege to stand before you today for the opening of the 36th International Data Protection and Privacy Commissioners Conference, organized by the Data Protection Office, which operates under the aegis of the PMO, Prime Minister's Office. Ladies and gentlemen, at the very outset, the question that comes to my mind is, are we really living the ice age for privacy? Is privacy dead and buried forever? I think we have to take it into account. But before coming to the gist of the matter, the other crucial aspect not to forget is that today, these subjects of data protection and privacy are relevant because we live in the digital age. Indeed, more than ever, safeguarding fundamental rights in today's information society is a key issue for the world at large as more and more people use information and communication technologies in their daily lives at work and also at home. In fact, with this growing use of ICT, numerous challenges in respect to concerns about privacy and the potential misuse of personal data online also arise. Undeniably, every citizen in the world fears that one day he will face violations of his fundamental rights, such as his right to privacy, freedom of expression or freedom of association or be victims of cyber criminals. Hence, ladies and gentlemen, we as responsible authorities need to focus and channel our resources in creating the right ecosystem for such threats not to arise. However, ladies and gentlemen, while a lot is being done on data protection and while many people show concern for data protection and privacy matters, it is also very ironic to see that the private lives of many are like open books for others. Indeed, through public platforms like Facebook and Twitter, amongst others. We openly expose our life to the public at large. Hence, somewhere along the line, we can say that many have failed to understand the true meaning of privacy. For many Facebook users, regular concerns are identity theft and how their privacy may be compromised since users are familiar with seeing profiles which set out in proud details the user's name, sex, address, date of birth, email address, employer, religion, and any number of other useful pieces of information which might be of interest to those with a bent for identity theft. However, ladies and gentlemen, it is not just Facebook friends who have access to and can collect data from users' profiles. While users are able to subscribe to applications such as games, they should also think about who is behind the application and to what extent users' personal information is collected when signing up for an application. Whilst a casual Facebook user 
tend to see these applications as a harmless games. Issues regarding privacy and data protection should nonetheless be at the forefront of our minds today. 